Previously on part one, Anya gets accepted by Eden School, and now the handler tells Lloyd to either get Anya to become his son's great friend, or become the best student and get the Imperial status. In order to become an Imperial, a student must get eight Stellas, or stars, that are handed out for excellence in school. However, if there is misconduct, the school also hands out bolts. If a student receives eight of these bolts, they will be expelled from the school. Lloyd gently smiles, considering the fact that he would have to turn Anya into an honor student. Back at home, after getting her school uniform, Anya and Yor get to spend some quality time together. Anya goes around wearing the Eden uniform the whole day, and some kidnappers try to abduct her, thinking she must belong to a rich family. But Yor manages to subdue them easily. Astounded by her mother's ability, Anya asks her to teach her some of her moves. When Lloyd gets back, the two girls are practicing punching the air. He ignores them, thinking it not to be much of an issue, a decision he would regret soon enough. The first day of school begins, and parents are called to the school along with their children for the first day of school. Lloyd had given up on making Anya an Imperial student, considering her lack of seriousness in studies, and so he had mixed with a lineup of students being called forward so that she would be right beside the son of Desmond, Damien himself. As Lloyd plans to make Anya his friend, she hears all of his thoughts using her telepathy. The plan was simple, become friends with Damien, ask to come to his house, and make direct contact. When Anya is called down to the line, she stands beside Becky, the daughter of the CEO of a military contractor, Black Bell. Even though her father wanted her to make friends with a lot of students there, Anya immediately realizes that most of the kids have bad ideas about others, and she turns her head away from them. The homeroom teacher, Henderson, shows around the school, introducing them to the classes, canteens, and all the rules of the school. He also tells them about the Stellas and Bolts. Just then, Damien approaches Anya and asks her about her father. When she tells him that he is a psychiatrist, Damien berates the low status of her father. Regardless, Anya stays calm and abruptly asks if she can come and play at his house. The two lackeys that follow Damien around, Ewan and Emil, immediately start bullying her for even considering herself to be good enough to be Damien's friend. Anya considers punching them, but lets them go for now. She remembers the words of her mother who told her to laugh it off if she is lightly bullied. She smiles menacingly at her bullies. This unnerves Damien to the very core, who plans to make her pay. On their way around the school, Damien and her lackeys start throwing papers at her and threatening her. She handles it all with a smile, until, well, she doesn't. Anya glances once if Henderson is looking and delivers the killer blow that she learned from Yor. It might not have been as strong as her assassin mother, but she does manage to send the little boy flying off. Henderson hears the ruckus and approaches them. Anya comes clean that the boys were harassing her and Becky along the way. Henderson finds it very elegant that she had protected her friend from the bullies, nevertheless, he is forced to hand one bolt. Henderson comes and tells this to the forgers. Henderson tells them that, usually, he would have handed out three bolts for violence, but, because of her elegance, she had gotten just one. Lloyd cannot believe it. She not only had earned a bolt, but also had managed to punch the very person she had to befriend. As the photographer takes the picture of the whole class alongside their parents, the terror is imminent on Lloyd's face. The next day, as Anya heads to school, Lloyd reminds her that she must at any cost apologize to Damien for what she had done. Anya promises to do as her father asks, but Lloyd is not sure his daughter is capable of doing so. Therefore, the spy heads to the school so that he can make sure that Anya apologizes. During the course of the day, Anya gets several opportunities to apologize, but each time, Becky stops her from talking to Damien. She has grown quite close to Anya and doesn't want her to stoop to the level of her bullies. Lloyd watches them and is frustrated that Becky is ruining his plans. So Lloyd dresses up as a waiter and makes sure that Becky is separated from Anya for just so long enough that she can apologize. Damien, who appears to have developed a crush on Anya, cannot stand to stay around her, and forcing his feelings down as he doesn't want to be involved with a lowly student, he runs away. Lloyd watches this in horror as he sees that his main plan had gone to waste right before his eyes. He believes that now, all hope was lost for Anya to become Damien's friend. Back at home, after Anya arrives, Lloyd starts forcing her to study, as that was now the only remaining way to get the Stellas and access the meetings. However, his teaching skills are not so appropriate and only manages to stress the little girl. 
Yor, who wants to be of all help, tells Lloyd that it takes time for little children to learn some stuff. Lloyd agrees that he was acting a little too harsh. As he puts his little girl to sleep, Lloyd wonders what kind of a father he would be like to his actual family. The next day arrived with sudden news that Yor's brother, Yuri Breyer, was going to visit them. For so long, Yor had described him to be a sweet kind boy and had always felt guilty that she had hidden her assassin job from her brother. However, Yor wasn't the only one who had kept secrets. Yuri, too, had never told his sister that he worked in the state security services. He was a second lieutenant there involved with the interrogation of spies from other countries. Let's just say his style of interrogation was similar to his sister's assassin nature. Yor quickly notifies that her brother was coming over, and so the whole family works to make the house look a little more coupley. Yor shifts to Lloyd's room and they even get matching toothbrushes. The bed they get looks like they were planning for a honeymoon. The foragers leave no trace of their fake family around. Anya is very excited to meet her uncle, however, she's already asleep by the time he arrives. Yuri has a really weirdly close relationship with his sister. He believes that no one but him has the right to be with her and help her with her life. So, the fact that she had been married for over a year without telling him made him a bit too suspicious of Lloyd. However, as the night goes on, he realizes that Lloyd is somewhat of a perfect husband and he cannot stand it. All of them get drunk as the night progresses and Lloyd too manages to ask him some questions about his job. Yuri tries his best to hide his identity, but it's not enough to pass the suspicions of Lloyd who had already managed to get some info about the man. Frankie had done some digging and they had figured that Yuri worked for the counterintelligence agency of Ostania. Told you, James Bond is nothing compared to Twilight. As Lloyd does his mental calculations, Yuri, now almost completely drunk, challenges his sister and brother-in-law to kiss each other if they are really husband and wife. Lloyd and Yor hesitantly comply, and when Yuri realizes that they were actually about to kiss, he stomps them and admits defeat. He is a bit too jealous of Lloyd and leaves immediately. The next day, when Yuri returns back to his office, he believes that Lloyd is a good guy, but also knows that spies act like good guys all the time. Suddenly, he realizes that he had forgotten to plant the bug in their house. Lloyd starts getting a bit suspicious of Yor as well. He was a spy after all, and in his line of work he couldn't trust anyone, not even his own fake wife. He becomes a bit distant with Yor, and Yor immediately notices the difference. She, however, doesn't really know the reason her fake husband is distant, and believes that she is somehow not worthy of being his wife. This troubles her the whole day. As she returns home from work, she is suddenly apprehended by agents of the counterintelligence agency. They start interrogating her about her brother and her husband. The woman boldly protects both her husband and her brother, and soon enough, the agents let her go. The agents were actually Frankie and Lloyd who had come to test Yor if she knew anything about her brother. Thankfully, she was oblivious and Lloyd can once again become normal with his family. Back at school, Anya realizes that a PE dodgeball match is about to arrive and it is rumored that if anyone gets the MVP rank in the match, they get a Stella. Damien and his gang also plan to get the MVP rank and they work extremely hard, or actually hard enough for a child. Anya goes home and tells her mother about the Stella match and Yor teaches her daughter some extremely dangerous moves. Some moves are probably not even legal for use in school. The dodgeball match soon begins with Henderson acting as the referee. Damien is quite confident that he can win, but there is one Mega Chad in the other team that can beat anyone. Bill the Mega Chad is in no way, shape or form similar to the others in his class. To begin with, he certainly doesn't look seven. The huge boy absolutely destroys the entire team with each of his shots. None of the students can survive his attacks. The final two remaining students are Damien and Anya. Anya manages to dodge every one of his attacks by reading his mind, but when she stumbles down and Bill gets to his final move, Damien sacrifices himself so that Anya can help them win. After Damien is out, Anya grabs the ball and remembers her mother's moves. She takes a deep breath, calms herself down, sets up her pose and then… makes a mess of the shot completely and gets out immediately after. Bill, who had single-handedly beaten the entire opposing team, is announced the MVP, but he isn't handed to Stella. The whole Stella thing was a rumor after all. A few more days pass and Anya gets to her first actual test. 
Naturally, Anya gets Fs on all of her tests. The cunning little telepath had planned to steal the answers from all of her friends, but had simply no idea who to cheat from. The next time, she plans to learn who is good at what subject and then steal from them all. Lloyd is troubled as well at her daughter's failures and plans to use his influence to get her all A's. However, he fears that this might make her friends a little too suspicious of her. Everything was hopeless. Lloyd calms himself. After all, studies weren't the only way to get Stella's. Perhaps he could make Anya learn the art of music or some other skills. To his dismay, however, his daughter is an absolute lackey and, to put it lightly, not so bright. It was truly hopeless. Realizing that even volunteering could get her Stella's for excellent performance there, Lloyd takes Anya to a local hospital for volunteering. However, even in volunteering, Anya is absolutely abysmal. She can't stop messing up every time she does even a simple task. Eventually, the forgers are thrown out of the hospital. As the two are heading out of the hospital, Anya's telepathy picks up the buried cries for help of an injured boy. The boy was injured in his legs and had slipped into the hospital's rehabilitation pool. He had been drowning. At first, Anya thinks of warning her father right away, but not wanting to reveal her powers, she makes an excuse of wanting to swim and rushes to the boy's aid. She rushes to help the boy right away with her father running behind her. Anya manages to save the boy, but starts drowning alongside him, and Lloyd quickly comes to their rescue. The boy was safe. The news of Anya's bravery is soon widespread, and the school eventually honors her with Estella. She becomes a legend after being the youngest person to get Estella. Makes Damien a bit more distant from her. Anya still wants to help her father with the mission and plans to become friends with Damien, but with his demeanor, it is very difficult. Anya somehow manages to read his thoughts and find that he has a dog, Max, that he loves very much. She believes that if she gets a dog, she can get close to Damien. That night, Anya requests her father to get her a cute dog. Somewhere in an underground animal store, there are hundreds of wild dogs caged in. One such dog gets up when the harsh owners come to get him some food. He appears to be a bit… let's just say, strange. Elsewhere, Lloyd disguises himself as an old man to give the mission's progress report to Handler. Handler assures him that they have no hurry with the main mission, but Lloyd does need to take care of some side missions as well, as the Ostania forces were planning on something huge. The recent removal of several of their spies from Ostania meant that Lloyd had to work several missions on the same day aside from his main mission. One day, as a tired and weary Lloyd comes back to his home, he overhears his neighbors talking about him. They feel like Lloyd is having an affair, as he is never seen with his family and working even on the weekends. Lloyd bites his tongue. He was so busy with other missions that he had forgotten to keep up his ruse as a family man. The spy quickly rushes back to his family and swiftly announces that next weekend, they would have a family weekend. However, Lloyd has to finish all his other missions by then. By the time the weekend comes, Lloyd is a completely different man from before. All of his strength has seeped out from his body. He is no longer anything like how he used to be. He is feeble and weak. He can barely stand up. Anya and Yor suggest they skip their plans, but Lloyd is adamant. He needs to make sure everyone thinks their family is real. They are going to be heading to the aquarium nearby. On their way, Lloyd notices that he is called for another mission. He goes to deny the request, but the mission turns out to be on the same aquarium that he is heading to. Despite Lloyd being adamant that he just wants to focus on his family for today, the lady offering the job stresses that the job is of grave importance, as it involves a chemical weapon. Lloyd has no choice but to accept the mission. The mission is to retrieve a capsule from a penguin who has been smuggled in yesterday. That capsule contains the plans to create the chemical weapon. Oddly though, Lloyd's troubles don't seem to end just there. His neighbors have come to the aquarium as well, and Yor, ignorant, asks them to accompany their family. Lloyd has to make sure he completes the mission as soon as he can. Cleverly, Lloyd suggests that they all visit the penguins, hoping to get the capsule, but when they reach there, Lloyd is absolutely paranoid to see the place surrounded by literally 200 penguins. Anya telepathically reads her father's mind and realizes what his mission is, and then uses her powers to find the penguin with the capsule. She casually points out the penguin as sick to her father. Lloyd manages to disguise himself as the worker in the aquarium and takes the penguin away to retrieve the capsule. He is stopped by a terrorist who had planned to snatch away the penguin, but Lloyd doesn't let him do so. 
The man quickly heads out to call for backup, but Anya, wanting to help her father, pretends that the man was kidnapping her, and so Yor loses her cool and smashes the man onto the ceiling, thus saving the day. In the end, Lloyd even manages to get his daughter a penguin plushie, which she is very fond of. The neighbors also are cleared of the doubt that he had been cheating and everything is well. But what of the Stella? What of the strange dog? What of Damien? What about world peace? Subscribe to our channel and find out more about Anya and her strange little family in the next part. Season 2 will be up in October. Thanks for watching!